Bismillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. You're listening to Microbiology Lesson on Aspects of Biotechnology in Microbial Ecology. This is the second episode and we're going to talk about microorganisms and pollution. We can think of the associations between microorganisms and pollution in two ways. Number one is where the microorganisms are the causes of pollution and number two is where they are the solutions. As causes of pollution, we can think of microorganisms playing two roles, first as pathogenic agents and secondly as non-pathogenic pollutants. As pathogenic agents, microorganisms can cause diseases in our food and water supplies. Um, microorganisms such as Campylobacter and Salmonella can contaminate our food. You should cross-refer this subtopic with my audio lecture on microbial applications in industry, part two, I think. No, part three, where I talked about food industry. I'll leave the link in the description. So microorganisms can also pollute our water supply. We in developed and developing countries often take this for granted, but our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents, their generations have set up layers of protection to safeguard our water supply. For many underdeveloped nations or countries that are in conflicts, people like you and me, every time they drink water, they risk exposing themselves to pathogens like salmonella, which can cause typhoid and salmonellosis, or vibrio species, which can cause cholera and other gastrointestinal infections. So from now on, when you drink, pause for a second. And as a sign of that gratitude, pay attention to your adab, your right manners when using water. Don't waste water. And also consider giving sadaqah giving charity to places where people are struggling with access to clean water. I know you might think you're students and you don't have money for charity, but you actually do. I felt like that too when I was like you. But you know, I figured that if you fast once or twice a week, the money saved from you not having breakfast and lunch is more than enough to start giving to charity. I'll drop a couple of links later, so check out the description below. Eutrophication happens when you have too much of a good thing. So nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, they help microorganisms to grow in aquatic ecosystems. But when you have too much of nitrogen, too much of phosphorus, you'll get excess growth of algae, cyanobacteria. For one thing, you'll get algal bloom which is this enormous layer of algae spreading out on the surface of the water. It blocks out sunlight and that kills photosynthetic organisms at the bottom. Secondly, when they die, oxygen in water is used as part of their decomposition. What happens when you have too much of this happening is oxygen runs out and that's bad because Aquatic organisms like fish will die off and also anaerobic decomposition will take place and it leads to productions of stuff like ammonia, phosphines, which cause terrible smell and poisoning of the water. Eutrophication can occur naturally. It's like a normal aging process for aquatic ecosystems, but that usually takes a long time. What concerns us more is that we humans eutrophicate those bodies of water through immoral industrial practices, agricultural practices, like when people dump waste from their factories or farms into lakes or rivers. So pay attention to this when you're working in industries later in the future. Do your best to stop your company from doing this. The third role played by microorganisms is as mediators of pollution. So here, the microbes themselves are not the pollution, but they mediate and make the pollution. For example, microorganisms like Geobacter species, they methylate mercury, meaning that they add CH3 or methyl group to the mercury, mercury. and that forms methyl mercury, which enters the food chain. 
So it got absorbed by the plants, which get eaten by tiny fish, which get eaten by small fish, which get eaten by large fish. So the poison accumulates. So this is called bioaccumulation. So when you eat the fish, you can get neurological poisoning, like loss of physical coordination, blindness, and even death. Another good reason to consider going vegan. So take a bit of time to study Table 26.1 from Black's, our primary reference book. It has an organized list of the effects of water pollution. You, you'll, you'll have the pollutants, their effects, and also some short comments on the relationship between the two. Hmm, yeah, even heated water is an important pollutant. So when we release hot water into water bodies, it reduces oxygen solubility, it degrades water quality. This is an issue for power plants that use water coolant. The heated water got released into rivers. I suppose data centers can also contribute to this. They may use water streams to cool down, for example, those Google or Facebook server farms. Yeah, in crypto as well. One of the environmental concerns of cryptocurrency is how it's likely to amplify the number of mining farms that can generate lots of heat into our environment, lots of thermal pollution. Anyway, microorganisms can also be the solution for pollution. We can use them as indicators. For example, Escherichia, Enterobacter, Klebsiella are called coliforms. Coliforms are indicator microorganisms that even though they themselves don't cause illnesses, they indicate the presence of other pathogenic bacteria. We can also use microorganisms in bioremediation where we use them to biodegrade pollutants. Biodegradation is when the microorganisms eat up the pollutants as nutrients and that biochemical process releases uh, less harmful forms of the chemical compounds. A classic example of this would be oil-eating microbes which have been used to clear up oil spill in the ocean. Microbial species from, uh, for instance, Pseudomonas or Marinobacter they can eat chemical compounds from petroleum as part of their diet. So as part of their normal metabolism, they break down hydrocarbons and convert them to water and CO2. Of course, the biodegradation is not 100%. It doesn't have to be. They just need to degrade the petroleum enough so that the leftovers can be dispersed naturally by the ocean current. Now, some pollutants are harder to biodegrade. We call them recalcitrant pollutants. So our solution for recalcitrant pollutants is co-metabolic bioremediation. So what we do is we add metabolic components to help the microorganisms to biodegrade the pollutants. One example is TCE or trichloroethylene. It is a groundwater pollutant that industries use as solvents. So here, what we do is we have methanotrophs at the site of TCE. Methanotrophs are microorganisms that use methane as a carbon source. Their genera usually have the word methyl in them, like methylomonas or meth methylocyanus. I'll find an example and put, put, put it in the description. So we encourage the growth of these methanotrophs by giving them more methane, more oxygen. You see, they don't consume the TCE pollutant itself, but when they metabolize methane, they produce an enzyme called methane monooxygenase. So it is this enzyme that eventually degrades trichloroethylene. Now, most of the pollutants, or at least many of the pollutants, uh, they are not recalcitrant. Microorganisms can biodegrade them quite readily. But even here, bioremediation is helpful. It helps speeding up the natural biodegradation process. So I'll leave you guys with this case study. It's a beautiful story of El Morro. El Morro was a landfill at Medellin, which is 
municipality in Colombia. So this is the same place of the Medellin cartel, which was a massive drug trafficking empire. There's a Netflix show about them. I haven't watched it yet, but I've read, I've read about them somewhere. They bribed police and officials. So, and if you say no, if you don't want to be corrupted, they would murder your family. They became so big that they even had a private army uh, trained by military instructors from the US, the Israeli, the British military, uh, because they can afford an army. You see, they, their revenue was billions of dollars every year selling drugs internationally. Imagine how much corruption needed in the society for them to get that big. And it all started bit by bit over time when people like you, people like me, make small decisions to choose corruption, to worship our own nafs, our ego. Anyway, I guess one physical metaphor, one physical image of spiritual corruption uh, was El Moro, which was a landfill site. So the poorest people started to go there to find something to sell. And over time, they started to live there. So you have tens of thousands of people living in the landfill. So imagine your mom trying to grow vegetables from that contaminated soil or your little brother drinking water from that garbage hill. So it was so sad when I read that story. But things can get better. You can heal corruptions. So there was a Colombian microbiology student, Andres Gomez. He worked with lecturers from the National University of Colombia, from um, University of Illinois, the US government, the Colombian government. They worked together on cleaning El Moro. And one of the strategies was bioremediation. They researched and profiled the microbial community at El Moro, and they found a way to encourage certain microbial species to biodegrade pollutants on that landfill to clear up the pollution. And eventually, after so many years, uh, that place turns into El Moro de Moravia, a beautiful park. So yeah, isn't it amazing? It shows you how your knowledge can be used for good. And it doesn't necessarily make you rich. I mean, if you sell services or apps that people are addicted to, that can make you rich. You know, like the drug leaders of the Cartel de Medellin that I mentioned before. But saving poor people on a garbage hill, it's harder to be rich doing that. that that's why I mentioned... That's why I mentioned cultural and spiritual factors in the last episode, how they also direct biotechnological applications. Because that's often what you need. You need uh, internal spiritual motivation as the prime mover to start a morally good biotechnology project. All right, I'll stop there. We'll continue in the next one. Barakallahu li walakum. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi